Today we'll be taking a look inside this Grade 5 Complete Curriculum book that we've been using this year with my daughter. You can see that they've got six different categories inside the book. But the goal of my videos and website is to show parents and teachers uh, what's inside the books because sometimes it's hard to tell just from descriptions and reviews online. So all of these kind of have like a dear parent section, tips and things like that, standard stuff. So let's take a look at this. For reading skills, facts, sequence, context, main idea, conclusion, and inference. You can see there's kind of a chapter on each one with activities. Um, spelling skills. We did not use this section because my daughter has dyslexia. So we used a more specialized program and, and skills for that, but I'll still show you. Um, for math, math is a subject that she struggles in. So I use this kind of a as a foundation and guidelines for what fifth graders would be covering. But if we had an area that was too difficult, we would um, maybe add some remedial work or stop and slow down. Multiplication has always been a challenge for her, so uh, we do a lot of supplemental stuff with that. And um, I'll go through that and show you. Um, we did use some of the language arts this year, uh, some of the writing. We don't really do a lot of test prep because as a homeschooler and with a student with dyslexia, it actually is more detrimental even though I do some test prep with her. Um, let's take a look at the reading skills section first. Um, so the first one talks about what are facts, how to read for facts, gives you kind of a sample problem, gives you a little, a little paragraph and asks some questions about uh, the paragraph. Um, and then a practice page where we usually do this together. Um, you can read a little paragraph, it'll ask you some questions, and you have to practice finding facts from the paragraph. I really like these types of activities because um, sometimes I'll read to her, sometimes she'll read depending on the day, and um, it gives her good practice at finding facts, but it's also good practice at comprehension and remembering what you've read and knowing how to go back into a passage and look for look for answers, look for details and facts. So this kind of gives you an idea of, of this area. And there's several pages on that. The next section, okay, well, all of these sections end with a writing roundup. Some of them we did and some of them we didn't do. Again, she has dyslexia, so I liked this one because this particular um, writing Roundup had a graphic organizer at the end of it, and those are really good for students with or without dyslexia. It helps them organize their thoughts, and it's not so intimidating when they need to write about something. It helps them kind of uh, see a picture and organize facts and information before attempting to write a paragraph or an essay or, or something longer. The next section is uh, what is sequence, and all of these are broken out very similarly, you can tell. Um, it has a reading section, and you have to put things in order that they happened, and I make her go back in the paragraph sometime and circle or underline details to help her get her answers. And this is a, a similar layout where you read, then there's an activity. Um, we're going to continue on. Again, there's a writing roundup with a graphic organizer. I liked all of these sections. I like the, the reading um, part of this book, especially. Main idea. Practice finding the main idea. You can see uh, 
just short little passages. I think they're really good. I don't think they're too short or too long. I mean, it just depends on your child's ability level. Um, one thing I would advise is that, you know, the grade levels that we use in the United States um, aren't always accurate, in my opinion. Each child has their own um, ability level and their own speed for progress. So. We're still finishing up for the year. Let's go to um, giving me still the reading section here. Alright, we're gonna again, the spelling skills. We did not use this book and I think that's something people need to um, really decide for themselves. You don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a curriculum. I see that over and over and over again uh, on Facebook and different um, different chats and threads and everything where people who have not homeschooled or who are just trying to help their kids with some extra, extra work maybe or enrichment, they think they have to go buy a curriculum. I mean, I think it's a huge waste of money personally. But, you know, as a former classroom teacher, I guess I have more confidence with piecing together a curriculum. Um, but this, these books are good because it kind of gives you just a foundation. And then you can add what you want to add and not do what you don't want to do. And that's one of the things I love about homeschooling because you've got so much freedom with it. Um, I'm going to go through, you know, each section of this book. And if it gets too long or boring for you, you can just skip ahead to the section that you're interested in if you're not particularly interested, but I want to show uh, how each section is broken out. So this is the spelling section. Um, it starts off words with, that's a short A sound, so you can see that the words act, chapter, plastic, planet, they all have that short A sound in them. Um, say and listen. It's important to do that, especially for students who have trouble with spelling and reading because it's uh, multi-sensory. You're using your voice when you say something and you're using your ears when you listen. And so the more uh, of our five senses that we can use when we're learning, the better, because I always tell my daughter, it's like um, five different highways or pathways to uh, a new piece of information in your brain, and if you've got five different routes, you're going to remember something easier. So um, using as many senses as you can when you're learning is a great thing to help students who might struggle in some areas. Um, this has another section. It says think and sort. Look at letters in each word. Think about how short A is spelled. Spell each word aloud. Again, they want you to think about it and then say it out loud. And then they want you to write it. Um, and, you're, and they're gonna talk about spelling patterns. How many spelling patterns for short A do you see? Write the 18 spelling words that have the A pattern like act. And then write the two spelling words that have the AU pattern like laughter. So uh, you're seeing that the A ah, short A sound can be spelled two different ways. And um, so it might be easier to just, you know, depending on how your child works best, find, since there's only two AU words, find those first and either mark through them or circle them or whatever, write those down and then write the other words up here. Spelling is like a real challenge for some kids and, and not a challenge at all for other kids. And honestly, with the use of computers and everything, I just don't think it's worth sweating that much, but everybody's got their own opinion about that. Here, it has a section for definitions. It says, write the spelling word for each definition and use a dictionary if you need to. Again, how many people have dictionaries? I think that's kind of a antiquated thing that uh, we still have testing for dictionary and encyclopedia skills. I, I, don't, I think it's important for kids to be aware of those and maybe introduced to them, but you know, we need to be um, moving into more current resources. Kids use apps and websites and everything for those uh, things now. So maybe you could use something online or uh, an app 
uh, if you prefer something like that. Um, analogies, this is something that some kids have a very difficult time with. So you really want to try to work one-on-one -on -one with them if they're having a hard time making those connections. It says an analogy states two words go together in the same way as two others. Write the spelling word that completes each analogy. If you're new to teaching or homeschooling and you don't feel confident, I always do one or two problems with my student uh, first to see if she has an understanding of what she's supposed to be doing. Um, I might even do the first one for her and then I can kind of tell from her feedback if it's something that she feels comfortable with, um, then I'll let her go for it. Otherwise, we might try doing a couple together. And depending on the day and her mood and how things are going, we might do all of them together or she might take over and finish them easily. You really have to be flexible and um, really try to gauge where your student is. And this takes patience and time and um, flexibility is the biggest thing. You've gotta be flexible, um, especially for students who have learning differences. And I think, you know, we're learning more and more about what those are. Uh, it, again, the whole, the whole lesson for the week, and usually these are kind of broken out weekly, is gonna focus on a particular skill. So again, words with short A, that little squiggly line above the A means it's a short sound, ah, ah. If you see a long straight line over it, it's a long sound, so it would be the A sound, as in bake or cake. But these words all have the short ah, sound as an act, chapter, plastic, and so on. Um, proofreading is one of the skills that they have this week. It's a little more difficult, so um, depending on your child's ability level, you know, you um, may want to do that with them, or you may want to skip it. You have to really kind of give yourself permission to not follow everything uh, that's in the books. Alphabetical order, this is another important skill. And then, um, so here's lesson two, they start words with, there's the long A, like I was just talking about. And you can see that long A can be spelled in different ways, and so they talk about um, say and listen, they give you their, your word list. And again, you're gonna kinda wanna break these out, a word list per week. Um, and it shows you the different ways that the, that long A sound can be spelled, and you're supposed to write the words there. Um, different activities here in the spelling section. Every week they, they'll have some things that are the same and some things that are different. So last week, you know, this section, or the first week this section was definitions, and this week they're gonna do classifying. Um, write the spelling word that belongs in each group. So coat, jacket, and you're looking for another word that would fit in that category, and I see sweater right there. Um, one of the things I've taught my daughter to do, but I'm always around, is to, you know, if you're not sure of the answer, there's an answer key in the back. So you can just look on whatever page you're on and um, find your answer. And it's important for kids to know how to look up the answers. Um, I, you know, we want to keep them honest and not have them looking up all of the answers. But in life, you do what you have to do to get by. And, you know, even if, if they're having trouble with the answers, looking them up and getting immediate biofeedback is actually a great way to learn something. So um, it's not really a bad thing if they're looking up the answers because they are figuring out how to get the job done. And that's a skill that we need to have in real life. Rhyming is an activity for the week. And I'll usually uh, assign a page a day. So that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and some pages they'll have writing some pages you might just talk about it with them because again this is dictionary skills with guide words and who uses a dictionary anymore I mean some people might cringe at hearing me say that but it's just the reality of the world that we're in now and um, there's so many things to learn and if a kid is having a lot of trouble with this think about 
is it really worth the effort and the headache if especially if you're homeschooling and and you can teach them how to look up a word and its meaning and pronunciation online it's something you might want to look at but not spend too much time on okay so that's the spelling section you typically want to have a list of words a week um, they'll have different types of words different categories of words this week sports kind of gives you an idea of the spelling section okay math so we use math um, in here to start with and usually start with place value and place value can be a real struggle for a lot of kids um, so you just have to uh, this is something that I can put some links on the website for some hands-on manipulatives and other activities that you can use to teach place value because it's a, really a concept that you need to understand um, before you understand it on paper you need to understand it um, not in an abstract way, in a concrete way. And so um, you need to have, uh, some people use an abacus, people use popsicle sticks and lots of different, you can Google different activities and, and things to learn about place value. But uh, this is called a place value chart. And sometimes you'll see them in the lower grades that just include maybe ones, tens and hundreds. And as the grades go up, they go up. And then you'll even see at the end of this section, we have one that includes decimals and numbers that are smaller than one when we're doing decimals and fractions. But um, so we used a lot of the math in here. Um, and then when we got to pages that were too difficult or she was having trouble with, um, we either skipped it or we broke out of the book Problem solving pages, I always do them with my daughter. Do not expect your child to do these on their own. A lot of kids, it's overwhelming. They'll, they'll give you an example of, a, of how to do problem solving. And then, um, you know, your child needs to understand what information to look for, what information is not necessary, which... Um, which operation they're gonna use, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, or something else. Um, it's just something to do one-on-one, -on -one, ideally. I know that's not, not everybody's able to do that, or maybe your skill set does not include that. If it doesn't, I would honestly skip it until you can find someone to help you do problem solving or um, focus on getting the basics down. So each one of these is a chapter, and we go as slow as we need to go in math for my daughter because it's just a, a subject that she struggles with, and a lot of students struggle with it. There's usually a chapter review and then a unit review. Here's multiplication. They give you a little descriptor at the top, some sample problems. I let her check herself. A lot of times you might get have a better outcome if they're checking themselves. Um, as opposed to you making corrections. I don't put X's on the page either. It's just psychological. Um, you know, it, I, sometimes I'll circle a problem and we'll go back and, um, and, and do it together if it's wrong or if there are a bunch of them wrong. We might just um, move on from that page and go outside of the book and do problems that are a little bit easier until they get the skill rather than just, you know, marking up the page with a bunch of X's. We always do a check mark at the top to show that we've completed it. Um, I don't put grades. It's, it's just over three years of homeschooling, I've learned that there's really no benefit to it. Here I marked that we, you know, used a calculator for these because she had just gotten mentally too tired, but she knows how to do the skill. Um, so you kind of have to be very flexible again and decide what your pace needs to be, depending on your state and your homeschool rules or, um, you know, if you're doing this as just supplemental work during the summertime or outside of school. 
This shows division. This is pretty typical math for fifth grade level. Um, every now and then, um, you can see I, I marked through that. I'm trying to remember why we did that, why I marked through it. Maybe I just didn't think that it was beneficial or she wasn't getting it. And so we um, worked outside of the book for that. It's really important not to just push through just to get done with something. Um, if you find that your student is not getting a concept, you need to stop and, and slow down and go back and make sure they understand it. And if it's something, sometimes you just need to go to something else and come back to it when they're more developmentally ready for it. Um, so you can see we did fractions. Fractions are actually a lot of fun because you can use a lot of manipulatives and um, do some really creative things for them to get the idea. This, we got to a section that I didn't like the way they were teaching it. And I felt like they jumped from something simple to something really complicated way too quick. So we went outside of the book to another book that I used um, and I'll, I'll end up reviewing that one as well. And I'll try to uh, remember to link it so you can know what we used. But um, they just didn't, I, I felt like the difficulty level went from really easy to way too hard without a proper, um, the proper skills in between. So we skipped a lot of that. But I'm showing you just so you can see the next unit was decimals. gives you a really good idea. We did the same thing with decimals where we went outside of the book a little bit. And also because we're getting to the end of the year, I wanted to make sure to cover um, some other things. So she had gotten a good concept of those and we're doing some measurement now. We still have a little bit to do before we are done for the year. So we're gonna be finishing finishing math, but it has a, the last unit is on measurement, and um, so you can kind of see that. The section language arts. Language arts is something that um, you almost have the same, the same things every year, and then you just build on them. So every year you start off with nouns, and then pronouns, you go to common nouns and proper nouns, and singular nouns and plural nouns and possessive and it's really kind of boring honestly uh, I mean I'm just saying that from my perspective as a teacher when I taught in the classroom and um, as a homeschool teacher um, it's important I do think it's important I had a really strong foundation they called it English when I was a student but now it's called language arts but it is important, I mean, um, you know, to speak well and be able to write well. And I think it's something that we're losing a little bit, but uh, it can be a little bit boring. But these pages usually just have like a description at the top and some sample problems and that answer key is in the back if you need it. Um, not overly complicated. So we kind of went through these. You can see the different categories. A lot of times, you know, if, if your child is in a home where English is spoken properly, they can listen and know what the answer is. But if English is not spoken properly, it might be a little bit harder. Um, so that's something you may or may not know. Uh, as, as a teacher, you can listen for sometimes or be aware of it. Um, some of this is kind of an overlap proper, you know, proper adjectives, proper nouns. So that's an overlap with some spelling skills. 
So, so we're going to see, um, this goes through nouns, verbs, adjectives, uh, all different types of, um, you've got adverbs, prepositions, and then uh, unit two of this is what is a sentence, tells you the parts of a sentence. Because my daughter has dyslexia, um, sometimes all of this writing can be overwhelming for her. So I might, we might do that orally and I'll, I'll um, write for her. Um, sometimes if the instructions say to write out the sentence, if it's something that you can do the skill without writing out the sentence and your child struggles with handwriting or writing or they move a little bit slower or um, even if they're a perfectionist and they get frustrated easily, you don't have to write the sentence out. Um, in the classroom, you know, teachers might do that to keep the kids busy because you've got kids moving at all different paces and you need them you need the quick kids who are quick to have something to do, but it can really bog down students who are slower. So we don't always write out sentences if it's not necessary. These are just little tips and tricks that might seem really common sense to a lot of people, but for people, more and more people are homeschooling now and they don't have confidence in what they're doing. So I'm just sharing things that, um, that I've learned and figured out over the years. All different types of sentences, types of um, agreement of subject and verb. This is where I think we stopped in here and because we were running out of time I wanted to focus on writing. So we did some stuff in another book. Um, and we've covered a lot of this but this is like Proofreading stuff, it's all lumped in. Vocabulary and usage, um, again, we use different resources for vocabulary and spelling, so we did not use this section, but there's a little bit of um, overlap, and we're using something different for our writing as well, so we did not use this section either. Um, it does have things like this. This is a pretty big book, so this review is a little bit longer than most of them will be. But um, has some resources in the back here. Using a thesaurus, again, that's something you'd be using a website for probably. Um, has some writing prompts in here, which are good. Just depends on your child's skill level as to whether they're appropriate for, for your your child or your student. Um, more writing prompts. A lot of kids get overwhelmed when you tell them to write something, so you need to be specific or have them um, have a list, a go-to list of ideas that they can pull from when they need to write. And, um, use graphic organizers uh, like I showed you earlier in the book to help them organize their ideas and it breaks down the process into smaller steps and it doesn't feel like so overwhelming. So this is more, this whole section is about writing. And we may come back and use some of this even though we didn't use it this year. Um, it's got some good stuff in it and so um, you know, be flexible. Just because it says grade five on the outside doesn't mean that I won't use it in grade six. Or, you know, if your child is a, a writer and loves to write and you, you want something challenging and they're in grade three or four, you can use it. So this is for uh, tips and tricks for standardized tests. And, you know, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying standardized tests are terrible. I just have three children who, um, you know, they do not, from my experience, reflect the ability of, of my kids. Um, one of my kids tests really well, and uh, that child's grades don't reflect that. Um, and then I have another one, vice versa, that does not test well, and that 
child has excellent grades. So um, some people get a lot of anxiety when it comes to standardized tests and it really affects their ability. Um, kind of flipping through these last few pages, take a look at it. But, um, you know, they are a necessary evil, at least for now. We'll see if they stay around. I think things are rapidly changing in education. But um, this is kind of an overview of this book. There's that answer key. So I'm going to, this is my first review of my first book, and I've got hundreds of books to review. I will post the link. Uh, if you want to purchase this on Amazon, um, and it's available in a lot of bookstores and um, online. All right, if you have comments or questions, uh, please submit those as well.